Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Tuesday, the 29th day of October 2024. And you know, we do these breaking news stories here every day, and they're all important. But let me tell you something. You really want to watch this one today. It is actually mind-boggling. Let me give you the three headlines we're going to look at. Netanyahu says Israel strikes on Iran destroy the industrial factories of death. This is from the Times of Israel. In other words, we're ready to pummel them next time around, which leads to our second headline. Defense Minister Gallant says Iran weakened for what we want to attack later from the Times of Israel. In other words, we're not done yet, but get this one, this third one. Advances in Lebanon ceasefire talks, officials said. They're actually talking about a ceasefire in Lebanon. And guess who's going to have a special role in preventing further escalation on Israel's northern border and Lebanon's southern border? The Russians. You can't make this stuff up. All right, let's go and look at the headlines. Headline number one, Netanyahu says Israel strikes on Iran destroyed industrial factories of death. Again, from the Times of Israel. In a speech to the opening Knesset session, the PM vows to prevent Iranian nukes make peace with more Arab countries. Israel hit key Iranian sites hard in airstrikes on Saturday, Prime Minister Netanyahu said during a fiery address on Monday at the opening of the Knesset winter legislative session. We severely damaged Iran's defense systems and its ability to export missiles, he said in a speech to the Knesset plenum. There were not basic, these were not basic tools we were attacking. These are industrial factories of death, and we struck them hard. In other words, we really uh, turned the corner here against Iran. He obliquely pushed back on reports that the White House convinced him to scale back the response to Iran's October 1st ballistic missile attack, emphasizing we make decisions ourselves according to our interests and considerations. Seemingly responding to recent criticism that the ongoing war lacks clear strategic aims, the Prime Minister said Israel's goals against Iran and proxies are clear. Our long-term strategy is to dismantle the axis of evil, to cut off its arms in the south and in the north, to exact a heavy price from Iran and its proxies, and to prevent Iran from having nuclear weapons. Let me stop right there. This is exactly the scenario the Bible portrays. There'll be peace in the south, peace in the north. Uh, in the future, where Israel will think they're okay, they think they think they're they finally got some peace in the region, and that's when this Ezekiel thirty eight thirty nine invasion will take place, led by whom? Led by, of course, the Russians. Well, let's continue on. Um, this story continues. It says the IDF carried out a wave of strikes against targets in Iran early Saturday morning, almost four weeks after the Islamic Republic's massive ballistic missile attack barrage on the country. The operation hitting targets some 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles away was unprecedented in the terms of its scale and duration, as well as Israel's intimate not, or immediate acknowledgement of responsibility. The strike came weeks after Israel had being urged to temper its response to the Iranian ballistic missile attack on October 1st, which came after Israel killed Hassan Nasrallah, the longtime leader of Iran's uh, proxy, the party Hezbollah there in Lebanon. Satellite imagery of Iran shown damage to a number of military sites, though Iranian leaders, of course, have sought to downplay the effects. He said Monday that the one obstacle from keeping Iran from controlling the Middle East, uh, Israel, is the one obstacle and, and keep Iran from threatening the world, which is true. Iran has said they believe they're going to take over the world. This is their last day's view of uh, Islamic Shia, Islamic prophecy. Uh, establish a worldwide caliphate, destroying two countries. First, Israel, the little Satan, and the United States, the big Satan. So Netanyahu continues, the fanatical axis of evil led by Iran threatens to destroy our country and trap other countries in its net and threatens the West first of all. Iran is working for a stockpile of nuclear bombs and will able to threaten the entire world whenever it wants. Now, according to Iran's thinking, he argued, if Israel fails, the entire Middle East will fall into its hands but we will not fail, we will win, and the whole world will be a better place. And so he promised to bring the hostages home, promised total victory, on and on and on, and this fiery speech that he made. Now, this is very, very important as far as we're concerned with last day's Bible prophecy, as we said. Iran will not be the major power, will not be the threat to Israel in the last days. It will be Russia, of course. Iran will join Russia, or Turkey will join Russia in an invasion in Israel, but the situation has to be set up first perfectly for that. There has to be peace in the region, and Russia has to have something to do with it. Well, let's continue on to see how that's going to turn out. 
Headline number two, Defense Minister Gallant said, Iran is weakened for when we want to attack later. Now, this is fascinating because if Iran does attack, it would be probably the worst mistake they ever made because Israel now has softened them up and their defense systems are down and they could really you know, bomb them back many, many years. Commenting on the strike on Iran, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant echoed Netanyahu's proclamations, saying that Iran's air defense and missile production capabilities had been significantly weakened. The response seems very precise, high quality, and deadly for what we wanted to hit. And I think the IDF has not carried out an operation like this ever. The Air Force has not carried out an operation like this since Operation Focus. And this was the comments on the Air Force, what they did in the opening strikes in the 1967 Six-Day six War. Basically, they destroyed the whole Egyptian Air Force before the war got started there in 67. Anyway, um, the, this is proof of ability, a very accurate hit on the radars and the air defense systems which actually creates a big disadvantage for the enemy when we want to attack later. According to Gallant's office, he made the remark shortly after the idea of strikes on Iran early Saturday, but they were only released yesterday, Monday. He said the strikes damaged their missile production capabilities, leaving stockpiles limited until manufacturing can resume, and supposing the manufacturing will take a couple of years to rebuild the ability to do this. And so evidently, as the more we look into it, it seems they did the damage they wanted to do, really soften up Iran to the place that Iran, you know, could not sustain any long, uh, large scale war against Israel continue on because their production facilities are gone, the radar systems down. So they are in a world of hurt, basically, after what Israel did. So we'll see if they respond. And we don't know one way or the other, but what we do know is how it'll turn out. Iran will not be the big player. Now, this, this next story is mind-boggling. I hadn't seen this before. Advances in Lebanon cease fire talks, officials say. They're actually trying to get a ceasefire in Lebanon. Hoxstein, this is the um, Biden uh, uh, guy that's gonna come over. He's supposedly going to arrive to get, get this, to finalize a deal stipulating a 60-day period of adjustment, leaving, leaving the IDF troops, the Israeli defense troops, in tactical positions. Hezbollah will be kept north of the Latani River. That's the 18-mile stretch, uh, the border of the no-man's land, supposed to be between Israel and Lebanon. They'll be kept north of that, while the Lebanese army deploys thousands to the border. And again, here's the big story, Russia to play a supervision role. You really can't make this up. Senior Israeli officials said the negotiations on a ceasefire and deal in Lebanon are in advanced stages. White House envoy Amos Hochstein may travel to Israel and Lebanon before the November 5th presidential election to attempt to reach final agreements. In other words, they're, they're scrambling now to do this in the next week. So the day before the election or election day comes, look what Kamala Harris and Joe Biden did peace between Israel and Lebanon. So they were working on that. Well, we'll see what happens there. Okay, if the talks advance, the IDF will begin to withdraw most of its troops and redeploy forces in South Lebanon and leave areas where their mission to remove uh, the threat from these forces of Hezbollah has been completed and likely remain only where there is tactical significance. The officials in Israel said the Lebanon situation has completely changed after the IDF offensive and there is agreement in Beirut to disconnect both the Lebanon and Gazan fronts. They stress the fact that fighting would continue while negotiations are ongoing until they com are completed. Western intelligence sources believe Iran would allow Hezbollah to agree to a ceasefire and perhaps even encourage it, even if the fighting in Gaza still continues. And then it goes on with the possibility of putting some new resolution together, uh, sort of like what happened in 2005, 2006. But this one, Israel will be able to keep it in place. The, the story goes on here, the proposed deal where uh, there'll be no Hezbollah terrorists south of the Latani River in that 18 mile stretch. Lebanon's own army, which is different than Hezbollah would uh, put five to 10,000 troops in. But Israel would have the right in the second component, there'll be an international mechanism to supervise this and they'll have the right to intervene as they're watching it if um, you know Hezbollah tries to, you know reassert itself in that particular area. Now, Israel has asked a letter from J U.S. President lame duck Joe Biden stating Israel's right to self-defense, making it clear the IDF would be able to act. American officials have, did not yet respond to questions on this matter. So we'll see if sleepy old Joe will write something like that. This would bring a, a you know, sort of what we're expecting there. And it's going to happen sooner rather than later because uh, Hezbollah is just being thwarted. Three or more of their top leaders were killed the other day. Uh, they 
the the people are you know they're they're leaving the scene. There were there was actually a tunnel there. Four hundred tons of explosives blew up a tunnel where it actually uh, showed up on the seismic uh, graph as an earthquake. It was so bad. And this was, and a, a thousand soldiers could have lived in there, would have lived in there, and been there to invade Israel. That was all destroyed. So they've destroyed basically everything that would keep Hezbollah able to invade northern Israel. So from Israel's perspective, well, we're doing what we wanted. It looks over. But then again, here's the main thing. The third component in the agreement is being negotiated is preventing Hezbollah from returning. This means blocking military means to be identified as banned from being air, land, or sea. So you can't let Hezbollah come in. Here's the key. Russia expressed a willingness to assist in implementing the agreement and is destined to play a part in stabilizing the region in Lebanon and Syria. The Russians will have a special role in preventing further escalation, a foreign source said. This sounds like something right out of the Bible, but this is this is the news report of this. You really can't make this stuff up. Russia will be, the, again, the country that puts the peace together that is going to keep Israel's security intact. This is precisely what we've said the Bible assumes. Israel is caught unaware. They think Russia is their friend. They're going to be there on their border, you know, supposedly keeping the peace. And what's going to happen? Eventually, along with Iran, Turkey, and other countries, there will be an invasion of soldiers from the north. And so this is setting the stage for all that. Now, this is not going to happen tomorrow or overnight, it's, but it's going to happen eventually to take time. But it will indeed happen. And it is amazing. I mean, it's incredible how all this is fitting together. You really can't make this stuff up. Signs 9 to 11 uh, in our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end. In the last days, certain specified nations will invade Israel. Ezekiel 38, 39, that's sign 9, sign 10. There are certain nations missing from the Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion. In sign 11, no superpower will intervene on Israel's behalf when they're invaded. Something will happen in the U.S. We deal with all that in our book. And then Appendix 5, what a regional war between Israel and Iran fulfill Bible prophecy. And, and same book, and the answer is no. There won't be, a re if, even if there is a regional war, that won't fulfill the prophecy. But what's happening with Iran is setting the stage so prophecy will be fulfilled. So the book is a free download from our website, Educating Our World, as us all material, and uh, under the heading of Bible prophecy, Please download it. But this is this is literally mind-boggling. So those of you out there, most this is most of the audience here that knows last day's Bible prophecy as we talk about it every day. I've got to be just amazed. Like we said, can you imagine this? Not only will the threat be removed from the north, but also the ones that will help guard Israel safety in the future will be whom? Will be the exact country that will lead this last day's invasion, according to scripture, Russia. Yeah, really can't make this stuff up. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. We'll keep you informed with all this. Until next time, as always, may the Lord richly, richly bless.